Okay, let's work problem 8.27. It's another problem about writing the electron configurations in the valence uh, level diagrams, including the boxes and arrows for each of these elements. Um, I keep coming back to this. I'll probably even do another one or two of these uh, pathways problems for ions because this topic, again, is uh, you know really one of the most important things you can learn here in this chapter. Some people are really good at the electron configuration business and um, master it pretty quickly. Um, other people struggle with it a little bit more, but um, it's something we want to get down because it really helps us explain uh, a lot about chemistry and, and how different elements react, okay? So um, let's work through this A, B, and C. It's a three-part problem. The first one that we want to be assigning the uh, electron configuration for is titanium. It's atomic number 22. That means it has 22 protons, but for our purposes here, since we're more interested in the electrons, it's also got 22 electrons because it's a neutral atom of titanium. Okay, so let's go through, assign the full configuration, and then we're also going to assign uh, some shorthand notations and box diagrams. So as usual, we always start with the lowest energy orbital, which is the 1s orbital. Two electrons there. Two more in the 2s, which is the next best place to put it. We put 6 in the 2p. All right, so now we've used 10, but we still got 12 more. Got to put 2 in the 3s. That comes next. And my 3p. 3p6, okay. My next place is the 4s. I think I'm starting to get close to where I need to be, but we've got four more electrons, it looks like. So that can handle two. And then the only place, well, the next place is uh, 3d10. Three, two can hold ten, but I'm only going to put two there because two, four, ten, twenty-two. So I've used all twenty-two of my electrons. Now this, what I've just written, I might call this the full electron configuration, okay? Because the full electron configuration considers all of the electrons, whether they are in the valence shell or whether they are in the um, inner core shell. But the full configuration considers all electrons. And that's what characterizes it from some of the other ones that we're going to talk about. Now, for shorthand, or for ease of use, I guess you can say, which might be a, a better way to say it, sometimes chemists will write a shorthand notation, okay? Or an abbreviated notation. Now, the abbreviated notation, basically what it does is it finds uh, what part of the electron configuration, the total full uh, electron configuration, what part of it belongs to the previous noble gas. So, um, very quickly, I determined that that break point was, was right here, between these P6 and the 4S. What's to the left of that, this business here, is the same electron configuration as the previous noble gas, which is, in this case, argon. Okay, if you look up argon's atomic number on the periodic table, I believe we're going to get 18. All right, if I confirm that, indeed, it's 18. All right, because this guy, the TI has 22, I subtract 4, that makes 18. And I know that this core shell of electrons is isoelectronic or the same with argon. So instead of having to write all that out, I just abbreviated AR in a parentheses. Now, I'm not done because I haven't accounted for all my electrons, but it's a whole lot easier just to write 4s2, 3d2, write this instead of having to write out all the shells, okay? And we use this condensed form a lot because, again, in chemistry, a lot of the action usually occurs with these outer electrons, the ones that are sort of in the valence shell. Okay, those are the ones that are easiest lost, or um, in some cases atoms want to gain electrons, right? Like on um, the halogens, say, for instance. And um, we've got vacancies here, or addresses to assign electrons. Um, so a lot of the action tends to go on out here, okay? So the inner core shell, um, we can just sort of abbreviate that, okay? 
And lastly, we can write an electron diagram, box diagram. Well, I like to call these box diagrams for the, uh, the valence shell as well of our particular atom. Now, what this is, again, is a series of boxes. Um, sometimes they're, I like to write them vertical, vertically, um, with this axis being indicative of an energy. So if I was to do that, I'd probably put one box like this for a 4s. And then I've got my d-type orbitals, of which there are five allowed. So I need five boxes for that. Okay, that's my 3d. I may even include 3, 4p, even though we're not going to have any electrons there. All right. And it looks like my 4s has two electrons. My 3d also has two, so I'm going to put them into the first 2d orbitals, leaving them unpaired in accordance with the Hunt's rule. There's nothing in the 4p, okay? So I might write something like that for my box diagram. Sometimes um, textbooks will just put these boxes sort of horizontally instead of vertically. But if you kind of understand what's going on here with the arrows representing electrons and the direction of the arrow representing the spin quantum number, I think you'll have no trouble uh, adapting you know, one, one way versus the other. All right, so that is then pretty. Let's move on to uh, chlorine, atom, atom of chlorine, part B. Again, if I'm going to write the full configuration first, just for practice, 1s2. 2s2, 2p6, that's my first 10, all right, those are those intercortial electrons. So I can get to 12 with 3s2, all right, still got five more, so I've got 17 electrons. So it looks like I need to do 3p5, 3p5, this is for a neutral chlorine atom. All right, so we're almost got that 3p level full, but not quite, right? And that's actually why chlorine atoms are pretty reactive, because I have a vacancy here in this 3p level. I could put one more electron there. So if I can grab an electron from somewhere else, I can fill up that shell, that p shell, that 3p shell. And again, that imparts a stability to my atom. And that's why chlorine atoms are pretty reactive and why they tend to like to grab electrons from other things, okay? Okay, so that's my full con configuration. What about my condensed? Remember, what I do to write my condensed configuration is I look for the breakpoint where the previous noble gases, that's going to occur right here. Things to the right of the dotted line are new, and things to the left correspond with the previous noble gas. Now, what is the previous noble gas in this case, okay? I think it's... No, it's not right. The previous noble gas is neon. Okay, and that's got the 10 um, electrons associated with it, or it counts for 10 of our electrons, okay? Now we just got to write what's uh, after that, which is the 3s2, 3p5, and we've completed our condensed electron configuration for the chlorine. I want to have a box diagram. I can do that without too much trouble. Then my energy axis. And I'm going to do this just for the valence electrons. 3s. I have two electrons, I have up arrow, down arrow. I've got P electrons as well. Remember there are three orbitals for P's. I've got to fill in five electrons. One, two, three, four, five. Notice the order that I filled it in. I want one, two, three, four, five. Consistent with the Hans rule business, right? Do not pair until you need to. But that would be representative of what we could write for a box diagram for a neutron of chlorine, okay?
All right, so moving on, we got one more of these to work. Um, I'm going to erase this work for chlorine so I have some space to write it over here on the right. The last one is for element number 23, vanadium. Now, what are we going to do for this one, right? Well, the first thing that we need to do is figure out what the um, atomic number is, how many electrons we got. Well, it's atomic number 23, which means we got 23 electrons as well in a neutral atom, right? So that's how many that we have to use. We go about our business in exactly the same way if I'm going to write my full configuration. Start with the 1s2. Go to the 2s2, go to the 2p6, okay? It's consistent because we're filling in with lowest energy shells first. Now I go to my 3s2 and my 3p6. Well, if I stop right there for a second to count how many electrons, I think I've used what? Let's see, this is 10 plus 8. I've used 18 so far. I've gotten five more to go. So after my 3p6 is my 4s, I can use two there. And then after my 4s, I gotta come back and hit my 3d. So it looks like I have to write 3d3 for my full configuration. Now if I wanna write my condensed or abbreviated, I look for my previous noble gas. And if I look here at the periodic table, of fact, I believe that's argon, right? Element number 18 is argon. It's the previous noble gas, the one that comes before the element of interest. And then I gotta find my break point. Generally speaking, that break point occurs wherever you have something P6. Okay? That's my break point. To the left of that line, it's isoelectronic with argon, it's the same as argon, so this represents this whole cluster of information. And then I simply write what's left over. In this case, 4s2, 3d3. That's my abbreviated configuration. It's essentially equivalent to this other one that's up above it. Okay, you see that? All right, wonderful. Now let's write the box diagram configuration. So down at the bottom, I have to have my 4s, and then I've got some d orbitals involved here. D orbitals, there are five of oh, them, or five types of D orbitals. We have the 3D, and then if I wanted to, I could have boxes for the 4P. That's your going to be now fill here. So I've got two electrons in my 4S. So I've got an arrow up, an arrow down. I've got three D electrons, so I put one there. Do not pair until I'm forced to. One, two, three. I've never been forced to pair, and I won't, in accordance with the Holmes rule. And then that would be my electron configuration for this guy. All right? All right, I kind of want to give you a bonus problem. Bonus problem here, okay? And, and this is actually going to be for the element right to the right of the one that we just considered. It's going to be for chromium number 24. equals 24 electrons, okay? So all I did is I shifted one box to the right, which adds one electron to my configuration. But this is actually going to really change things. Now you might think, at first glance, and again, you could be a pretty reasonable person if you thought this, that okay, you just add one more electron, so instead of 3d3, I'm just going to make this 3d4, 3d4, and then just do this, right? That would be your first guess, I'm going to think. Okay, you're just adding one more electron, it's going to go in that D, okay, all is good, right? Now, if you guess that, again, I think you might, might be reasonable in guessing and then projecting that that's the case. But the problem is, is that that is not exactly what happens, okay? 
this uh, column of the periodic table where, where chromine's at is kind of, again, a special case, just like uh, in a previous video we talked about silver being a special case, which is you know, five blocks to the right. Now, why is it special? Well, we, we come across this situation um, where these two orbitals are you know, pretty close together in energy. And as this is written right here, notice that we are one electron short filling that fifth 3d orbital. It just so happens that it's energetically favorable to have at least a half-filled set of d orbitals, or p orbitals for that matter, but, but d plays a, better, a bigger, there's a better energy benefit, okay? So I guess what I'm saying here, in a nutshell, is that taking one of this, these electrons from the 4s and putting it in this 3d is more energetically favorable than having a vacancy here. And so this is actually what happens. So instead of having the 4s2, 3, 4, you end up with 4s1, 3d5 in your configuration. So again, this is a little bit of a weird exception, but you just kind of, I think, have to remember that that, that kind of thing happens and be on the lookout for it in the columns that are headed by chromium and then silver, which is five blocks to the right in the periodic table. So for the cases of the chromium, right, if you, you would have a vacancy here, but if you fill that in, that half-filled set of d orbitals is better than, than having the vacancy here. So it's, it's a little bit more stable. In the case of silver, where you have five more electrons, what, what happens there is that 4s is stolen to complete your d orbital. So if you have five more, it'll go one, two, three, four, five with the down arrows here, and your vacancy would then be here, okay? Okay, so hopefully um, this discussion was a little bit useful with this, this bonus problem here. Um, there are a few uh, sort of quirks to this, and again, I, I think I can only encourage you to familiarize yourself enough um, so you've seen that and you come to expect it, okay?